Alright, so in today's video, we are going to be talking about this armband for the Deutscher Volkssturm Wehrmacht, well, the German People's Army. And German People's Army, or the Volkssturm, it's actually a very interesting story that I think um, you guys will enjoy, for those of you who don't know it. So, the Volkssturm was formed in 1944 as kind of like a national militia, and it was hoped that these units would be able to help out the failing Wehrmacht as they fought on the western and eastern fronts. Um, most of the men in these units were conscripts, and they ranged in age from 16 to 60 in the beginning. By the end of the war, you're looking at some of the combatants in these units being you know, 14, 13 years old, uh, which is really incredible that something like that would happen. Um, yeah, they weren't the best units. Uh, one of the main problems was they were very under-equipped. You know, by this point, Germany's starting to lose ground, they're starting to lose factories. So a lot of these Volkssturm units are being equipped with captured Soviet, British, you know, Polish weaponry. Uh, in some cases, they're being reinforced with weaponry from old armories. You're looking at World War I era rifles, machine guns, things like that. And by the very end of the war, there are reports that they were using weapons that had been taken from museums, like muzzle loaders, crossbows, things like that. So you're looking at a force that's really, really um, out-equipped by the forces that they're fighting against. Uh, coupled with that, they also didn't receive a lot of military training. Uh, when they did get military training, it was usually on the Mauser 98K and the Panzerfaust, or the Tank Fist, as they called it. And really, that was about it. So a lot of them didn't actually have experience with their weapons until they got into the field. Uh, so as you can imagine, morale in these units was not very good. And because of that, these units, when they were not at the front, were placed under the command of a political officer who was supposed to help keep up morale, tell these units they were doing what they needed to do to defend Germany from the invaders, uh, etc. Which, as you can imagine, did not work very well. However, when they were actually put into combat, they were under the command of Wehrmacht officers, uh, and they seemed to be most effective when they were fighting alongside actual German soldiers as opposed to working on their own. That being said, a lot of these units ended up surrendering without much of a fight. Uh, you did have a few examples of some fanatical units that were actually fighting to the death, really, um, especially against the Soviets, because they were really terrified of being captured by the Soviets, with very good reason. So a lot of those units ended up fighting from the, to the death simply out of fear. Uh, but a lot of them surrendered to the American and British troops that were marching into Germany by that point. And yeah, the Volkssturm, really, they were what was defending Berlin in the last days of the Third Reich. You know, you have what's left of the Wehrmacht, which is not very much, and you have the Volkssturm. And, you know, even though Berlin held out for yeah, a decent time against a fairly large Russian army, you know, there was really no hope at that point. So the Volkssturm was really a last feeble effort by the Third Reich to hang on to their power for just a little bit longer. Now, the Volkssturm didn't have an official uniform. In fact, this armband or armbands like this were really the only uniform that the Volkssturm had. Uh, a lot of them were just wearing civilian clothing. You know, if you look at photos from, like, Battle of Berlin, you'll see that they're wearing, like, overcoats, and they just have these armbands on there. And these were produced by many different manufacturers during the war. So my version, as you can see here, has the eagle on the left facing inward and the eagle on the right facing inward. Um, a lot of them will have both eagles facing right, both eagles facing left. Um, you know, there'll be differences on how the reef is formed. Like, sometimes the reef will be just one piece without any of the details there. You know, the eagle will look different. Um, really, there's, in the end, it all comes down to what material is being used and, you know, what kind of stitching, things like that. Things that you should be looking for when you're looking at any cloth item from the Third Reich. And as you can see on the back here, that's from where... You know, that came through when it was being made. Um, yeah, even by the end of the war, they actually had armbands like this that were being made out of old tablecloths, if you can believe that. So, yeah, it's a very interesting piece. It tells a very interesting story. I know a lot of people don't know a lot about the Volkssturm. Volkssturm. And it's a, uh, you know, it really is a sad story. You know, that all of these old men, these young boys, were being thrown into combat, a lot of times against their will, you know, to fight against the Soviet horde, which absolutely wanted to kill every German they came across, really. 
And then the Americans, the British, and the West, who German propaganda didn't paint to be that much better. So, you know, they really were in a terrible situation. And, you know, this armband really, I think, helps to illustrate and tell that story. So, thank you all for watching. Um, if you would leave a comment down below, I'd love to hear from you guys. You know, what your thoughts on the Volkstorm are. Maybe anything else that I might have missed that you guys might know about. And, uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you all again soon. Bye.